Hi, first grade. This is Miss Kelly here again for your literacy lesson of the day. This should be for April 9th. Today, I am really excited because we have an amazing story that we're going to read today. We're going to learn all about the first time anyone landed on the moon and was able to walk on the moon. So today, we're going to be able to read a story and go back and identify and retell the key details of our story, A Walk on the Moon. Our story is called A Walk on the Moon today, and we're going to read through the whole thing, and then we're going to go back. And Miss Kelly has already created her key details web. We're going to go back through and read each detail, and you're going to have to guess if it's a key detail that Miss Kelly put on her web or not. Then afterwards, we're going to do some writing about the first walk on the moon. So I'm really excited to get started today. I'm going to have the computer read the book first so we can listen along. Make sure you're following along the highlighted word. Here we go. A Walk on the Moon On July 16, 1969, the spacecraft Apollo 11 blasted off into space. Three astronauts inside the spacecraft took off for the moon. They wanted to be the first people to ever land on the moon. Millions of people watched on TV as Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin made their four-day journey. The spacecraft was launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Armstrong and Aldrin moved into a smaller craft called the Eagle for the moon landing. The two men saw that the Eagle was heading for a huge pile of rough boulders or rocks. They were able to steer it to a smooth area. A cloud of moon dust rose up as the Eagle landed safely. The eagle landed on four legs and had a ladder for the astronauts to climb down. People back home were glued to their TVs. They saw Neil Armstrong climb down the eagle's ladder. He became the first person to step onto the moon. He described the soil as a fine, dusty powder. The moon has less gravity than Earth, so bouncing around was easier than walking. When Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, he said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. For almost three hours, Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon's surface. All around them were craters or large holes. They did not find any water, but there were lots of rocks. They collected moon soil and rocks to take back to Earth. Then the astronauts rejoined the Apollo 11 spacecraft and headed home. The astronauts left an American flag on the moon. It is a reminder of the great accomplishment. Okay, now that we've read through the book, we're going to go back and Miss Kelly's going to read detail by detail and you're going to have to help me figure out, is it a key detail that needs to be included on this web? Or was it not a key detail? Miss Kelly did not put it on the key web. Remember, when we are talking about key details, we always want to know that key details help support the main idea. The main idea of our story today is all about the first walk on the moon. So the details I'm looking for are details that help me understand more about the first walk on the moon and what happened. Let's go back to our story and I'm going to read through. You're going to tell me, was it a key detail I put on my web or not? Okay, so we're reading through our story to figure out the key details that help us understand more about the first walk on the moon. Let me read through, and I want you to think in your head. 
Is it a key detail that Miss Kelly put on her web or is it not a key detail? Okay. Our first sentence says, on July 16th, 1969, the spacecraft Apollo 11 blasted off into space. Hmm. Does that tell me information about the first walk on the moon? Absolutely. That tells me when the first walk on the moon happened and the spacecraft that they used to get into space and onto the moon. Good job guessing that that was a key detail. Miss Kelly included that one on her key detail web. I wrote July 16th, 1969, the rocket Apollo 11 left Earth. That tells me exactly how they landed on the moon. That was a really important detail. Let's keep going in our story. Three astronauts inside this spacecraft took off for the moon. They wanted to be the first people to ever land on the moon. Hmm. Well, when I'm thinking, it's probably important to know that there were three astronauts on the moon, but I don't think the other details are really my key details. Let's keep reading and see if we can find some more. Millions of people watched on TV as Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin made their four-day journey. Hmm. Now I know the name of those three astronauts. Those are probably really important because these three men made history by being the first people to land on the moon. So I think I want to include that in my key detail web as well. When you look, Miss Kelly wrote on her key detail web, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin were the three astronauts because they were the first ones to land on the moon. Okay. Ms. Kelly's done a couple examples and I've helped you kind of remember why or how we identify those key details. Now it's gonna be your turn. I'm gonna read the next detail and I'm gonna have you guess before I reveal if it was a key detail or not. Okay, so I'm gonna read the whole next paragraph. I want you to think in your head, what is the key detail that Ms. Kelly put on her web? What were the key details we learned from this paragraph that helps us understand more about the first walk on the moon? Armstrong and Aldrin moved into a smaller craft called the Eagle for the moon landing. The two men saw that the Eagle was heading for a huge pile of rough boulders or rocks. They were able to steer it to a smooth area. A cloud of moon dust rose up as the Eagle landed safely. Okay. Think in your head, what was the key detail that we learned? And how would you write that key detail in my web? Okay, hopefully you have it in your head. Compare with what you thought in your head to what Miss Kelly wrote on her web. I said Armstrong and Aldrin used the eagle to land on the moon. You might have included more details than Miss Kelly. That's okay if you talked about how the eagle was able to land on the moon, then you did a great job. Let's keep practicing. Okay, I'm gonna read this entire page again. There are two key details that Ms. Kelly found in this paragraph that she thought of. You are gonna do the same thing. You're gonna think in your head while I read, what are those key details and how would you write them on a key details web? People back home were glued to their TVs. They saw Neil Armstrong climb down the Eagle's ladder. He became the first person to step onto the moon. He described the soil as a fine, dusty powder. The moon has less gravity than Earth, so bouncing around was easier than walking. Think in your head, what were the key details we learned and what would you put on your chart? Okay, I'm going to tell you what Miss Kelly put on her chart and you can think how did that compare to what you had. I wrote many people watched from home on their TV and that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. I chose these details because it was really important for the American people this first walk on the moon and all around the world people were watching it happen live on their TV. They were able to see the moonwalk happening. So I thought that was a key detail about what was happening. Then we know that Armstrong was the very first man to ever step foot on the moon. That's really important to know about the first walk on the moon. There were a couple other details like 
that the moon had a fine dusty powder. That was interesting, but does it really tell me more about how man walked on the moon? No. Same thing with how they were able to bounce because of gravity. It's really interesting and fun to picture in my head, but it doesn't really give me information about how they were walking and able to land on the moon. So it wasn't my key details. Okay, you guys are doing an amazing job so far. There is one more key detail that Miss Kelly thought of for her web. I'm going to read the last page and I want you, of course, in your head to think, what is the key detail that we learned and how would you write it on your key detail web? For almost three hours, Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon's surface. All around them were craters or large holes. They did not find any water, but there were lots of rocks. They collected moon soil and rocks to, ta to take back to Earth. Then the astronauts rejoined Apollo 11 spacecraft and headed home. Okay, my friends, hopefully you thought in your head, what was that last key detail? Compare what you thought to what Miss Kelly put on her web. I wrote, Armstrong and Aldrin collected soil and rocks for three hours to take back to Earth. I thought that was really important because the whole reason we landed on the moon was to be able to discover more about it. And they took soil and rocks and they explored all around the moon to tell us more about it back on Earth. So I thought that was a key detail. Yours might look different from mine. That is okay. As long as you're practicing and trying your best, we are really proud of you. Let's move on to writing. Amazing job retelling those key details and learning all about the first walk on the moon. Now I want us to go back and be able to write about what it would be like to be that astronaut who was the first person on the moon. Something that good writers use is sensory words. Those sensory words are things that help the reader imagine what it would be like to see the story, to smell in the story, to taste in the story, to touch and to hear. All those words help us create that mental picture in our brain of what it would be like. So I wanna do an example of what it would be like in a garden. You guys are gonna write about what it's like on the moon, but I wanna think about what it would be like in a garden. So if I close my eyes and I'm trying to picture in my head, what does it smell like in the garden? What does it feel like in the garden? What do I see in the garden? Hmm, I have some really clear ideas of what I want the reader to understand, what I think about the garden. So what I wrote was, in the garden, there were lots of beautiful flowers. Because when I close my eyes, that's what I could see. I want to include what they can see. There were lots of beautiful flowers. It smelled sweet, like roses. Because I was always imagining, what would it smell like in a garden? It smells really sweet, like flowers. Hmm. Am I going to say what it tastes like in a garden? No, because I don't even know what it tastes like in a garden. I've never tasted a garden before. But I could think about what would they hear? When I close my eyes and I imagine the garden, I hear insects and I hear lots of noise from them. So I wrote, they could hear bees buzzing around the flowers. When I read the whole thing, you should be able to picture in your head what the garden is like. So right now, try closing your eyes while I read and picture the garden that I've written about. In the garden, there were lots of beautiful flowers. It smelled sweet like roses. They could hear bees buzzing around the flowers. Were you able to picture that garden in your head using my sensory words? Amazing. Well, now it's your turn. You are going to do the same thing, but you're going to be describing the moon. So I wrote some sentences that might help you get started. Again, think about what would they see on the moon? Could they smell on the moon? Could they taste on the moon? What would it feel like on the moon? What would it sound like if you were the astronaut on the moon? I gave some sentences that might help you get started with your writing. You could say something like, on the moon, hmm. It felt like, hmm. They could see, hmm. I want at least one sentence describing what it would be like on the moon. But if you are being extra adventurous, I would want two or three sentences about what it was like on the moon. Remember to include this with your work 
on your math work and send a picture to us later. Awesome job, first grade.